Hi, my name is Lydia. I use she, her pronouns, and I am talking to you from Berkeley, California, um, unceded Ohlone land. I am so happy that you joined us today um, and that you are interested in learning more about Line 3, maybe learning about Line 3 for the very first time. Um, thanks for coming. That's awesome. So I went up north to Line 3 a couple weeks ago, um, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about that experience. There's a lot I could say. I won't be able to get it all into this video right now, um, but I, so I first heard about Line 3 a couple years ago. Um, I go to school at McAllister College in St. Paul, Minnesota, which is Dakota land and is just three to four hours south of the Line 3 corridor, the Line 3 replacement pipeline that's being built. And at McAllister, I study environmental studies and I'm focusing on environmental justice and indigenous rights and sovereignty and political movements. Um, and so I've discovered my passion for that at McAllister and also uh, have a ton of peers that are really involved in the movement to stop Line 3 and have been spending time on the front lines throughout this year. And I've been really eager to get up there given how passionate I am about it, how terrible this pipeline is, how important it is that we stop it. Um, and I was long overdue to get up there, but I finally went um, up to the pipeline for the first time at the Trudy People Gathering, which was just a couple of weeks ago, and then I ended up returning the next weekend because I needed to be back there. Um, and when I returned, I went to this encampment that was on an Enbridge, drill, uh, an Enbridge easement at the drill site of the first Mississippi River crossing, the first spot where the Enbridge pipeline, uh, where line three will go under the Mississippi River. And the easement is like a boardwalk that hauls, that allows equipment to be hauled out across the marsh. Um, and so folks were camping there for eight days and I was lucky enough to join the last like three days, I believe. Um, and so yeah, we were set up along the boardwalk and it was truly one of the most moving and meaningful experiences of my life and I can't even convey to you fully why that is because words are not good enough um, but I want to share a little bit about what was so meaningful about that to me um, first of all being uh, led by Anishinaabe indigenous leaders specifically women and two-spirit leaders was really profound um, and you know, being invited into their space, being invited into their ceremonies and their prayers, um, and just these really intimate spaces where they were teaching us about their indigenous wisdom and their teachings and the ways of life that their ancestors have carried for hundreds of years and how they live in right relationship with the land. Um, and they, they just welcomed in allies with open arms and wanted to teach us how to live in a meaningful way um, and how to be with the land. And that was, I can't explain how amazing that was. Something that I wanna mention that really moved me was one night, um, this indigenous man was telling us a story about how he, when he first learned English, his worldview shifted um, because in the Ojibwe language, there isn't a we don't con in the Ojibwe language, you can't conceive of humans as being higher than the natural world. Um, whereas in English, the natural world is talked about as inanimate objects and as things and as nouns, and they're not talked about as living beings and relatives uh, that are our teachers and that are on equal footing with us. And he talked about how when he first learned that, or when he first learned English, his worldview shifted because that's not how we conceptualize things in English. And when I heard that story, I felt my worldview shift a little bit. And I feel like I could actually see what he was talking about. And I could actually see myself kind of like shrink down into level with the earth, um, which is really incredible. And I don't know if I'm describing that well. But um, yeah, so learning those teachings was really remarkable. Um, another teaching that was really profound was just that, you know, we must respect the earth of course, but respect for the earth goes farther into responsibility. It's more than just respect, it's responsibility. 
Um, and they were talking a lot about that up there. Like, what is your responsibility to the earth? You know, we need to protect the earth in the same way that it protects us. And so I've been thinking a lot about my own personal responsibility to the earth um, and how I can fulfill that, including being on the front lines and stopping line three. And finally, a big message of the treaty people gathering was that we are all treaty people. Um, the treaties are the supreme law of the land and we are treaty people just as much as the Anishinaabe people are treaty people. And we have a right to uphold those. Um, so yeah, I'm just so grateful to have spent six nights on the front lines and I'm really eager for my return in August. I'm gonna be going back up north, hopefully with my dad. And um, being there, I just, I felt really connected to something bigger than myself and I felt purpose in a way that I haven't felt in a really long time. Um, and I got to be a part of not only breaking apart the white supremacist extractive capitalist system that we're living under today, but importantly, I also got to be a part of building the world that we all wanna live in, where we're living in reciprocity with the land and with each other. Um, thank you so much for coming. And I just want to end by saying that if you have an inkling and an urge, if you feel called to go to the front lines in northern Minnesota, and that's something that you can do, I really, really encourage it. It's um, an incredible experience, and I think you should see for yourself if that is something that feels right for you. Um, and also, feel free to reach out to me if you want to talk about it more or hear more about my experience. So thank you so much. I appreciate you all.